Today, there has been a flurry of new NVIDIA Ampere information, and those who watched my last video will know I expected this. So, since I expected this, I've been preparing some thoughts and doing some digging in the background. I actually have a little bit of information to add on on top of this new Ampere information, and a little bit of follow-up RDNA2 info as well. That's right, in my last video, I was told that the 21st stuff would start to be revealed, and... Right on cue, it seems like that directly references AIBs being allowed to tease their upcoming Ampere graphics cards. And, and to be honest, having stuff teased today should have surprised nobody. It's the 21st, and the number 21 has been a large part of NVIDIA's marketing for their new Ampere lineup. But easily, the biggest reveal today was that picture on Twitter that was a leak of the RTX 3090. A triple slot design. Honestly, this may be the biggest single GPU graphics card release as a reference in history. And those who are surprised by this need to remember, all of those leaked coolers before were for the RTX 3080. And those who have followed me will know that I've said the 3080 will use the top die, but that it will be heavily cut down to control its power usage. Well... If you don't control Ampere's power usage, this is how big it needs to be. And what else do I know about this? No, it's not just to keep the card quiet. It will use a lot of energy. That 12-pin they're adding to Ampere is capable of delivering 600 watts. And the Founders Editions, I am told, will ship with a 12-pin and then also come with an adapter, most likely for 3 times 8 pin. This will use more energy than Turing. Even the overclocked Titan RTX wouldn't pull more than 330 watts. I expect the 3090 to pull more than 330 watts at stock. And in fact, I have been told that the premium cards could push north of 390 watts. That the premium AIB models could be more than 3 slots and that you should expect most non-cheap versions of these cards, although they won't be cheap, to have at least three 8-pins. Although some AIBs will probably still use the 12-pin like EVGA. And so yeah, to conclude the first part of this video, every little whisper I've heard recently lines up that this is not just to keep it quiet, although I don't know that the Founders Edition will be overly loud. I've heard some AIB models are. Now, this really is there to cool a 350 watt plus card, and it may overclock well. I believe it's stock it boosts just south of 2 gigahertz, but if you push it hard, you can get over 2.2 gigahertz. But just keep in mind, if you do that, it will use probably at least 400 watts, but that will be done so that NVIDIA can deliver a card that performs at least 40% better than the 2080 Ti with mind-blowingly good ray tracing performance, or at least mind-blowingly good ray tracing compared to Turing. So I guess, yeah, Turing sucked though, so it's up to you of how impressive that is. And yeah, seven nanometer refreshes could come out. I am told still that the top GA-104 and 102 dies should be made on TSMC for the professional quadro card so that they don't use a ludicrous amount of energy in data centers. But there's no word on when that will or if it will come to gamers. And when I see a 390 with a triple slot cooler, I think that one's also being made on Samsung. Whether manufactured on Samsung's 8 nanometer or 5 nanometer nodes, these names are marketing terms, and it is Samsung either way, it seems. And on Samsung, these cards will not be nearly as efficient for gamers as they could have been. But it is what it is. And actually, moving past the node comments, I do want to mention EVGA's marketing today. They had a throwback to a version of a card from the GTX 200 series that came with a dedicated physics processor. They basically just put a GTS 250 on the card for processing physics. It could be a coincidence, but I'm bringing it up again because that is interesting that they would reference a card with a separate processor for their marketing. I know that EVGA gets more information than most AIBs from NVIDIA, and that's because NVIDIA trusts them and holds some of their debt as well, by the way. Um, yeah, I have to say this. I have heard from another source that there could be a co-processor on the card. Although the funny thing is, I was told by this source, it seems sketchy, 
Most people don't know about it, but some people do, and it might not even be for ray tracing. It might be for DLSS, or to be honest, it might just be the VRMs moved farther away from the die for direct cooling on the back of the card. Either way, still saying it, there could be a separate processor on Ampere. NVIDIA is going all out. Even if they're forced to make their cards for gamers on Samsung's nodes, they want to win. They want to be first, and they want to push the cards as hard as possible to make sure AMD can't take the performance crown. Actually, speaking of that EVGA marketing again, I am getting a lot of flashbacks to the GTX 200 versus Radeon HD 4000 series. Back then, NVIDIA launched first with really high prices, touting revolutionary new features like PhysX. And people said, hey, AMD isn't terrible, but there's no way they compete with this. And then, a bit later, not too much later, they launched the 4000 series. And no, it did not take the performance crown. But it was pretty close to NVIDIA's top cards at a fraction of the price using a fraction of the energy. I'm not saying I'm sure this is going to happen, but man, the comparisons really are there. Before the 4000 series came out, there was the HD 3000 series from AMD. It really wasn't more efficient than NVIDIA, but it was pretty close, and it cost less, and it proved AMD was back at least in the upper mid-range gaming segment. And then everyone knew the 4000 series was coming, and the rumors were it was incredibly more efficient. But no one could have imagined how much they had fixed their architecture. It sounds like that might happen, and that's why I keep tweeting about it. And what I'm about to say won't be entirely new details, but this is what I've compiled about RDNA 2 this week, and I think you'd be interested to hear it. From what I'm told, RDNA 2 just doesn't look like it's going to use as much energy as Ampere. It should be a more efficient generation. You should not need to buy a new case or a new power supply for it. It really does seem like AMD has a serious advantage in efficiency coming this fall. And speaking of this fall, it's not just Navi 21. As I've tweeted, Navi 22 should follow shortly after. Now look, it should follow after. AMD's trying to hit a November launch date for biggest Navi, but at the very least, it should be out by December. And so what I will say is before next year, we should have not only a high-end competitor from AMD, but a killer lower high-end upper mid-range card to replace the 5700 XT as well. And I do think Navi 22 will be more impressive for its time than the 5700 XT. And a lot of people like the 5700 XT. But that's all I really know about it for now. That's what I've heard this week. That's what I know about Ampere and RDNA 2. And I will cover all of it as closely as I can as we get closer to these launches and yeah, I expect a lot more leaks to come out in the coming weeks. So please make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss that information. Subscribe to Broken Silicon on your preferred podcast app so you don't miss all the in-depth discussions with my brother Dan, who's a scientist as we go through the weekly news and as I talk to other experts and interviews with guests. And if you have the money, but only if you do, consider supporting me on Patreon. It does give you ad-free and early access to podcasts and also exclusive podcasts no one else gets to listen to in addition to voting for future subjects. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. 